In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the third component to an effective offense in Madden 21 and why it matters for your gameplay. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I just wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become better Madden players. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just wanna encourage you to click the subscribe button. We upload videos every day that can help you get better as an offensive and as a defensive player in Madden 21. And in this video, Video specifically, we are going to be talking about the third component to any effective offense in Madden 21 and how you can basically master this from the bunch tight end offense. And so if you have not already uh, gotten the bunch tight end offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. You can get that offensive guide for just $15 uh, and it will literally walk you through step by step how to use it. This is the exact offense that I use to be successful in week in league in money games whenever I play subscribers this is an offense that I go to whenever I want to dominate on the offensive side of the ball and so if you want to learn exactly how I run it you can get the entire guide in the description of this video but in this specific video I want to share with you the third component to an effective offense in Madden 21 and that is a constraint theory play. And so if you know anything about the Munch tight end, you know that the power play that we like to use is this play PA boot over. And really the primary reason as to why we like to use this play is because if someone is running something like a Mike Blitz three style, Mabel coveraging us on both sides of the field, this is gonna do a really, really good job. As you can see, gets over the top of that 25 yard zone. And so what's gonna happen is we know based off of our research, that this specific adjustment is going to force them to have to play with their flats on 30, their curl flats on five, and their hook curls on five as well. That is how they are going to have to set up their defense to be able to stop this PA boot overplay. Let me show you what I'm talking about um, real quick here. So if I go to this and I set up a Mabel coverage, um, as you'll see right here, let me just show you my play art. This is cover three Mabel. Okay, so we've got a hard flat or a five yard curl flat zone that's gonna play that underneath route to the circle receiver. And then we have a 30 yard flat zone that is going to play the deep crossing route to Devontae Adams. You see right there, he sits on it and he takes that away. And so what a constraint theory play is, is it is a specific play that you call that you have set up via your power and your counter play. And our counterplay does a really, really good job um, against cover four style of defense. We talked a little bit about that uh, earlier, how if someone were to run a cover four style of defense, they would have a decent shot at being able to shut down the crossing route. But however, if we run tight end corner and they're running that cover four, you see that we're going to be able to get that route open. And so... What the defense has to do is they have to play a specific type of coverage, a coverage that is specifically going to take away the, uh, the, the deep corner route and the deep crossing route on both sides of the field. That is then going to lead them to overextending, which is going to then open up our constraint theory play. Now we talked about this in the previous videos, but we really believe here at the channel that you want to call a play for a specific purpose. You don't want to be calling plays just cause, right? Or just cause it looks cool or just cause you want to try it out. Although that is fun, you want to do that in practice mode, not in a game that is actually important. When you're playing an important game, you want to control the variables and you want to only call certain things on because of certain reasons. And so the reason that we're going to be calling this in particular play um, is because it is very likely that our opponent is going to be running some type of cover three Mabel coverage with the double flat at the depths that we talked about with those depths being five yards and 30 yards on both sides. And so that's where I like to use this play mesh as my constraint theory play because um, it is going to take advantage if they try to defend like that. And so here's how we're gonna call this play. What we're going to do um, is we are going to streak the triangle receiver. As you can see right here, that's gonna be Devontae Adams. We're just gonna put him on a streak 
And then what I like to do is I like to take the circle receiver right here, which is Tavon Austin, and you can kind of do a little bit of everything with him, but I personally just really like to put him on a little out route or a little whip route or something like that. Even a hitch will do, right? Just some kind of underneath route like that. Not a flat route, I want him to be able to have success and I want those flats to drift out so that I can hit him if they're not using a yellow zone on that side of the field. Now on the right side of the field, there's a lot of things that you can do, but if we think about our PA boot overplay and our tight end corner play, that's going to kind of take us back and say, okay, maybe you should just do this specific adjustment. And that adjustment um, that we want to do with our running back is we just want to put him on a little block and release route. Just a little check down route um, that we can utilize. We could also put him on a streak. There's a lot of things that we could do with our running back, okay? Um, but what I like to do is either a smart route, an option route, or blue route, a little, light, little block and release pattern um, like this right here, um, you know, something like that or a wheel route. I love the wheel route. Those are all different options. If you think of zone coverage, I'd recommend a wheel route. And then with the tight end, we're gonna show you two different things you can do. The first one is we wanna go ahead and put him on a little delay drag, um, delay crossing route, and he's gonna kinda be a check down for us. Now, if you take a look here, you're gonna notice the primary thing I wanted you to see, and that is that the route to the square receiver is going to do a very, very good job, specifically against cover three, cover two and cover four. So the zone coverages, this is going to kill it, okay? Especially if they've done what we talked about with the specific depths, okay? So we set up our adjustments again, probably looks a little something like this. And then when we motion this out, if you just watch this square receiver, you're gonna see, I'm just gonna use the gunslinger and basically pass lead him all the way to the left side, giving it a nice little easy lane for me to throw the ball. Now I want to show what it looks like if I was in, for example, a cover four. What would a cover four or a deep quarter zone, what would that do to this specific coverage? Well, we're going to show you what it will do uh, right here. Let me just set up my adjustments. As you can see, we've set up all of our adjustments. And then you're just going to motion him out all the way to the sideline. And again, you'll see that the zone won't drift out there fast enough and you're able to hit this against cover three and cover four, which are two of the most popular ways that people are gonna defend you. Now I wanna talk specifically about another coverage that she's likely to see, and that is the cover two defense. So again, we're gonna set up our adjustments uh, just like so. We're gonna streak him, we're gonna put that little out route out there, um, something like that. Whoops, I apologize, I messed up my adjustments. So we're gonna put circle on the out route, put uh, R1 on like a little smart route and option route or a wheel route, either way. I actually do like the, the wheel route a lot, but you'll see here, cover two is not gonna stand a chance because they drift to the inside. Whenever it's a zone drop, they don't just keep drifting to the sideline, but they drift to the sideline and back, and they basically run themselves out of the play. So that leads us to uh, the last type of coverage, and that is a cover three with deep halves. Um, now this one should, you know, this one is gonna be killed by tight end corner. Tight end corner will kill this, PA boot over will kill this. Pretty much everything that you do from this formation, uh, from this formation will kill this play. Uh, this is not a sound defense for this. You should be able to easily hit that square receiver just like so. But I wanna share with you one other thing that you can do because I know that the tendency that you're gonna face online is going to be to, for people to run a lot of Mike Blitz 3. It's the number one defense um, that has probably been called in Madden 21 because for reasons, I mean, it's a decent defense, but I wanna show you what it would look like if you streak the tight end and you streak the triangle receiver. What you're gonna notice here is you're gonna see that the triangle receiver um, is going to basically run up the seam and you also have that other receiver running up the seam as well. So what you can do um, as a result of that is the seams now become a little bit more of an option, especially, especially against the cover three. So with wheeling the running back and with doing all of these adjustments, if you watch right here, you should see that you're gonna have little windows of opportunity that you might be able to hit this little running back deep, deep, deep up the seam. As you can see right there, easy little read, easy little dot. When you pair this with a corner route, um, it's actually really likely that people will occasionally do something like this right here, where they basically will call Mike Blitz 3, but what they'll do is they'll put this 
right side guy into an outside quarter zone because they know that that's going to help them stop the um, that's going to help them stop the the PA boot overplay. Well, the beauty of that is if they do that, you see here, I can do this nice little lob, and I'm going to have that tight end running right over the top of that quarter zone, even with a deep out zone KO corner there. So this play right here is like the perfect constraint three play because it looks exactly like your power play. It looks exactly like your counter play from this, but with a couple of adjustments, you're gonna be able to use this play to really frustrate the defense when they start to over uh, over commit to stopping one thing. Again, a constraint theory play is when you call a play that looks like your power play, it looks like your counter play, but the reason you call it is because it is a direct counter to whenever they overcommit. They are starting to overextend, they're starting to drop everybody back, they're starting to put their zone drops way back there, and then you hit them with this corner route or this easy little simple play that keeps the chains moving. That's what a constraint theory play is. I wanna thank you for watching this video, and if you wanna learn exactly how I run the bunch tight end offense, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description. It's the best offense in the entire game, in my opinion. It's the most simple offense to master, and you can master it today if you get the guide. Again, the guide is just $15. Thanks for watching this video, and we will see you guys later.